God's grace, mercy, peace, and hope be multiplied unto you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being uh, here in God's house with me on this uh, chilly late November to acknowledge our online uh, listeners and viewers. It's um, a great thing, I believe, that Grace Lutheran Church of El Centro uh, tapes uh, the preaching of God's Word and sends it, makes it available for uh, people to watch. I understand the audience is not insignificant, that several do watch and listen to these messages. So may God bless you uh, for supporting um, the preaching of the gospel to a, a larger circle. That is wonderful. Well, the word Advent is a word which enjoys uh, currency in the English language. We don't use it all the time, but w we do use it. And when it's said, I think you understand what this old Latin word means. Let me give you an example or two. The advent of spring put everybody in high spirits. You understand what that means? Does it? When spring comes, it does something to make people happy. Here's another one. The advent of lower gas prices has increased road travel by Americans. I think that's true. I'm not quite so stingy with running my errands now. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> $1.99 gas or whatever. That's in Arizona. You guys need to go to Arizona to get your gas. You save a ton of money. Okay, so, and the word advent, uh, that example would be the arrival of lower ga gas prices. You understand what it means. So you know what the word advent, and of, and of course the word advent, the arrival, the coming, is a well-worn word in the Christian church because every year we celebrate the advent, not of lower gas prices, not of spring, it's hardly spring now, but the arrival of somebody, and that somebody is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it is <coughs> common among preachers, <coughs> oh, by the way, Advent is not just a uh, word which means the arrival of a sp specific guest, but it's an entire season. So this season of arrival starts today, and it ends when the arrival comes on December 25th. By the way, you'll run into people who will criticize you for celebrating Christmas on the 25th of December. Not because it's the 25th of December. If it was July 6th, they would criticize you. Because they'll say, I know we're in the Bible. Does Jesus say, does, does it say that the Lord Jesus came on such and such a date, on such and such a month? Here's the way it goes. But he did, was born. And although we don't know the exact date, the church has assigned him a date because every human being has a birth date. My sister, Vicki, <coughs> uh, maybe how old is Megan now? 18, 19. Uh, after a lot of paperwork and some big bucks, uh, flew to China to pick up her adopted daughter. Um, Females in China, I think to this day, are devalued. Everybody wants a boy. But she adopted this little baby girl. I think Megan was only two weeks old, very young. Uh, to get to the point, they didn't have her birth date. They didn't have a record of her birth date when she was born. But you know she had one. You know she had one. So Bic Vicky did the best she could, and she, she chose October 1st, October 1st, as Megan's birthday, because she had to have a birthday for, you know, records and celebration. Everybody wants to celebrate their birthday. And I think the reason she chose October 1st, because it's the, uh, oh, the government chose it for Oh, I like my story better. <laughs> I thought it was a national holiday. 
Okay. Oh, the government chose. I still like my story better. It was a big day in China, so October 1st, whether it was the government or Vicky. I think it was Vicky, Vicky Joseph. So Jesus has a birth date, and the church has given it its birthday. So don't let that criticism bother you. Uh, you say to those people, well, fine, you pick a birth date, and you can celebrate his birthday then. We just, the church has decided to celebrate in December. But it's the coming, the arrival, that we want to talk about today. And uh, we're going to use the all three texts, but especially the gospel lesson. Now, it is common for preachers to talk about three comings of Jesus. You only have one coming, your birth date. I only have one coming. But the Lord Jesus, because he's the Lord, has three. And the, let's, um, the first one is his birth date, just like October 1st, we think, somewhere around there, it's been a sign that Megan entered this world as a human being, as a human being. Of course, Christians think of the fetus as human, but you know what I mean. Okay, so everybody has a first coming. Jesus had two more. His second coming is when he comes into your hearts. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, you let the Lord Jesus do exactly what he wants to do, and that is to sit on the throne of your heart. God bless you for that. And our job now is to keep him seated on the throne despite our sins, which he washes away. He will dwell with you despite your sins and my sins, and he will live there. And by you allowing his second coming into your heart, Stand to enjoy an eternity of blessings. And the third coming is what we talked about the last three weeks when we closed out the Gospel of Mark and all these warnings coming that Jesus is coming back as a judge. Now that makes me nervous. I get nervous when I'm on the road and I see the lights of a police car. Because I always think they're after me. Sometimes they are. But okay, why am I nervous? Because they are going to uh, indict me for something I did wrong by writing a ticket. And sometimes you don't just get the ticket. You have to go to see a judge to take care of it. And that is not a pleasant situation. Jesus is coming back as a judge, but it, is not, it does not have to be unpleasant for you. Or for me, because you have Jesus in your hearts. You not only know him by his first coming, that he was a historical person and walked and talked with people, but you also know him as your Savior. That's wonderful. So when he comes as a judge and he separates people like a sheep, the animals that have wool and hear the voice of the shepherd, stay in a flock, okay, from the goats who don't know the Lord Jesus, who don't know the shepherd, who go their own way, okay? It'll be a scary day, his third coming, for those who don't, haven't opened wide their hearts, but it'll be a day, the Bible says, to lift up your heads. When the third coming of Jesus arrives, many people will go like this, but we will go like this. Finally, <laughs> finally, we're going to go home. And <clears throat> to preach on all three of those comings would take a long time and kind of be confusing. So with the help of some resources, I'm going to choose the first coming, which is usually the last one, except for kids. The kids got it. The kids got it. They know that at this time of year, Christmas is coming, Jesus is coming, presents are coming, joy is coming, even the adults will be happy, okay? Because God came down as a baby and walked among us and did his mission of paying for our sins before he removed himself physically from this world. So we're going to talk about that, and there's three reasons for it, and these are inspired by our text of Jesus arriving into Jerusalem. One is it's our new year. 
The first reason that we can put a lot of emphasis on this, the fact that God has become man, is our new year. And like new year on the secular calendar, you get a fresh start. Sometimes I think it only lasts about 12 hours. <laughs> you make a resolution on New Year's Eve, and you know how it goes. You know how it goes. But it's a new start. It's a new start. can rightfully enjoy the first coming of Jesus because this Jesus paid for our sins. And all we have to do is confess our sins and be new people. Walk into a new year. You can do that every tie one on every night, huh? Because it'll be washed away by the blood of Jesus. And the next day you can do whatever you want. If it happens, yes. But you don't go out of your way to, how do I say it, take advantage of God's grace. But isn't it wonderful when you make a slip? When you make a slip, you can walk fresh. And today being New Year's Day, we can like everything that went wrong in the past year can be, and uh, we are culpable for some of that. The fights you had with spouse and other people, the rudeness that we showed on the road, the greediness that we showed with our money, the laziness that we showed in school, all that washed away, and it is a happy new year because of his first coming. The second coming, the second reason... is found in our creeds. We just did the creed that um, any who, who came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. Who for us men, heaven. The second reason we can emphasize this coming of Jesus when he walked and talked with people is because God became man. That's huge, that's huge. Because only man could die. Jesus was within him. And one theologian said this, it's, be, it's because Jesus, one reason Jesus became man so that God could abandon him, could abandon him. He will never abandon you. He will never abandon me, but he abandoned Jesus for your sake and for mine. Another way of putting this is uh, Jesus suffered hell for you. Jane and I were talking about this the other day, what we thought hell would be like. And um, I got this from a book or a, a great, uh, some writing. You'll never know. You will never know. You will never know what hell is like because Jesus, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Oh, I want to give you this example. Here's my claim to fame. I once shook the hand of Richard Nixon. Remember him? He is a real guy. The reason I bring that up is Jesus is a real guy. He's a real guy. He actually had feet. No, I wonder what his favorite food was. That's how real he was. What was Jesus' favorite food? I bet it was pepperoni pizza. <laughs> I don't know. But he's just like you and me. He became human, and God abandoned him for our sake. That's the second reason we rejoice, and I say rejoice because I think this day should be happy. And the third reason <coughs> is, us, is in our text, and that is um, it's a promise kept. It's a promise kept. I will fulfill the promise and send you a righteous branch, Jeremiah says, a sprout from David's line. Judah will be saved, the Lord our righteousness. I don't know about you, but me, it drives me crazy when people don't keep their word. When people don't keep their word. It damages my view. It's really damaged. Ask my wife. I'm a pretty cynical guy because I can count on people disappointing me. That's pretty cynical, isn't it? Huh? But people are that way. God is not. God is not. God keeps his promises. And when the first coming of Jesus unfolded the advent of Jesus, it was a promise kept that a, a descendant of David would be king of kings and lord of lords, savior of the world, um, good guy, savior, savior of the world. 
that promise has been kept. So, let's close this up. What does this mean? Well, be happy. We're going to sing joy to the world this, at the end of the service. It's time to celebrate the first coming, the birthday of Jesus. Now, you had one birthday, but like you, you have a birthday. So that's what Christmas is. It's the birthday celebration of Jesus. You know that. Be happy. Find comfort. Find comfort that uh, Jesus' first coming has all these blessings, salvation being the big one, the blue of heaven being the big one. And the third is we got some homework to do because in the text, when Jesus physically went into Jerusalem, he asked his disciples to do some chores. Untie the colt, right? Jesus needs something to ride on. Something that gets him off the ground a little bit, that elevates him, because he is a king. Now, you know this, the colt was a donkey, not a horse. All kings in classical times rode horses. Jesus rode a donkey. It got him off the ground, but not as high as a white Lone Ranger Trigger, was that his name? St Stallion. Okay? But it got because Jesus is a humble king. He comes to serve, not to beat us up. Okay, so we need to untie a colt and get him on it. We do that as a congregation. We're going to do that in an hour. When we talk about money and budget, we're going to be generous with our money so that we have a colt for Jesus to ride on. Hmm? And we're also going to be careful with our money so it does what we're supposed to do. We are not here to put Martin Luther on the colt. We're not here to put Pastor Gary on the colt. We are not here to put the choir on the colt. We are not here to put the forthcoming pastor on the colt. We are here to put Jesus on the colt. <clears throat> and we're here also to spread cloaks before him. Cloaks before him. To spread the way. To get to get the word out. This radio business that you're doing or online sermon, let's that's, that's do more of that. To find a cult, to put them on it, to spread the cults, to have a parade, to have a parade. That's kind of what Christian discipleship is all about. The mission of the church is have a parade, to pray Jesus, hmm? to pray Jesus, okay, and to praise him joyfully. God give you praise on this first day of Advent and on the assigned date of his birthday and throughout your life until you see him face to face in heaven. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds on Christ Jesus. Walk beside him as he walks on the colt. Take the reins in your hand. Throw down your cloaks for him to life everlasting. Amen.